Good afternoon, everyone. Top snowiest months in Seattle, February, breaks the record back to 1949. More snow on the way, National Weather Service warnings for the same exact area as West Coast British Columbia down through Seattle. Forecast loop shows rain, snow, sleet. Two feet of snow in this storm? Uh, Not really, just a foot. Looking out another week and a half, extreme cold, West Coast United States. And the first half of February, third coldest on record. Take a look at the accumulations, Mammoth Mountain. More signs in the skies that our jet streams are in the wrong places. We got tornadoes in Guatemala, middle of winter, lenticular clouds in Croatia. Mainstream media never wants to talk about the sun, the way it affects our jet streams. Extreme dip and polar vortex going to return back to the U.S. next week. It's all because of a warmer Arctic. So the warm Arctic's causing all-time record cold temperatures. Normal jet stream on the left, according to IPCC. But they don't even talk about the natural variability between La Nina and El Nino. Another natural cycle on our planet that changes rainfall temperature and wind flow patterns. But you can't tax the sun. And during these uncertain times, I've teamed up with My Patriot Supply Long-Term Food Storage, a nice affordable starter kit, two-week food supply, 1,500 calories per day, breakfast, lunch, and dinners, plus the four-gallon storage containers included in that. This is a good first step in getting more self-sufficient. And if you click through the Prepare with Adapt 2030 page in My Patriot Supply, you can get this starter kit for 75 bucks. Please remember, there's a limit of two per household in this special offer. Quick request from anybody who is on the Minds platform. Subscribe to Adapt2030. I'm starting to put this type of video information into a written format, as well as Steema.com and Medium. That way you can stop, take a look at more in depth on the charts and keep a written record of the changes that we're seeing and have seen as we move forward into the intensification of the grand solar minimum. AccuWeather, top snowiest months in Seattle. When they put this report out a few days back, it was the snowiest in 50 years and that's since turned into the snowiest in 70 years. February totals number seven out of the top eight, but in February itself, it's the second highest total. Now this snow depth in inches chart here, a little bit different way to look at it. Seattle Tacoma Airport. Now there's another storm expected to come rolling in over the weekend and into Monday, Tuesday. So that total, since we're only halfway through the month, uh, 35 inches could very well be eclipsed from 1916. USA Today putting the latest totals in as I looked through just a few hours ago. Snowy is February in 70 years now, back to 1949. And then there's another gargantuan storm on the way. The one that brought record snow and record winds to Hawaii with massive waves in the 40-foot plus range, 80-foot on the faces. That same storm is going to make landfall next week right over British Columbia and those same areas, Washington, Oregon. Now we take a look here at the snow analysis Cascadia Range. You can see where the dark purple is. And then the periphery, all the extra snow that's fallen you got to realize in multi-generations, those living in the same area are not used to seeing this snow. For many, it's the first time in their lives to see this much snow, even though they grew up in this same area. And looking back last week, as the first storm was progressing through, you can see where the hot spots are, literally. The reds and the oranges, that's where the heaviest dumps of snow were. There's a good cover throughout the entire coastal region there. And then I want to jump over to the seasonal snowfall accumulations. This is from October 2018 until pretty much present Valentine's Day, February 13, 14, 2019. It's not specific just for Seattle, but it does show you the snow totals across lower 48. The areas with the white and gray getting around 15, 20 feet. And again, we're going to get into some record snow again this year in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Street artist, two feet of snow in Seattle. Excellent. You could probably add another foot as we get through the next seven days or so. So when they do talk about adding a foot to the 20 inches, we're getting right around that 35 inches of all-time record snow recorded in February. This uptick was not predicted through the global warming models. The only way it could be happening is if our jet streams are moving into different places, bringing different moisture patterns. But the next storm is set on tap here to blast the West Coast, literally. 
Could be some wind records shattered as this thing makes landfall. Now, if you're not familiar with what this system is, this is the same system that just blew through Hawaii, sending snow down to 6,500 feet, which is the lowest recorded snowfall they've ever had on Maui Island, and 191 mile per hour winds up on Mauna Kea registered. Those massive monster waves at 40 foot from the back, literally 80 plus feet on the face, that's the same storm right here. And as you move through Thursday and Friday, this is the periphery edge of it here, that blue is snowfall. Now the problem is it's going to be mixed with all types of precipitation. They're really having a difficult time trying to forecast this thing out. It's the second time they put the same issued statement out, very difficult to forecast. But where you see the pink and the blue, that's the danger zone. It's going to be right between sleet, freezing rain, and snow, some kind of combination as it moves through. Now, the corporate controlled media is really good at showing you these images that have like a tenth of an inch of snow, and then they talk about the snowiest so far in 50 years, 30 years, 20 years, 70 years. But they put these really tiny snow totals when they show the images, so in your mind you're thinking, that's not very much snow. It never snows in that place anyway. I mean, eh. Originally on February 10th, this was the most snow in 20 years. So people aren't even used to that. Most snow in 20 years, they grew up the whole time, and it's very moderate, very temperate climate, rarely snows. And then people were panicked. So they went to the stores, they bought everything off the shelves. And this is a recurring theme and a recurring image set here. Empty shelf, empty shelf, empty shelf, empty shelf. Now this empty shelf scenario might not happen somewhere in Chicago where they're used to these types of storms. Somewhere in Buffalo where they're used to these types of storms. Minnesota, they're used to this kind of winter weather coming through. Not in Seattle. But while you're stuck at home, get out the food coloring, take the kids outside and make a dino. I really like the creativity of the snow art that's come up from the feet to the dinosaur. And speaking of snows, let's take a look at Mammoth Mountain, California. Massive snowpack. This is actually tied so far with the 2016-17 all-time record snowpack in the Sierra Nevadas. And guess what? Two months away, they're going to break through that record and probably put another 20% on top, making it the all-time most amount of snow ever to fall in the Sierra Nevada mountains. And rolling out here for the 6 to 10 day outlook, cold forecast, National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. Probability of below, that dark purple out to the west over there is 100%. So guaranteed it's going to be cooler than average. So I thought, I wonder if any temperature records were broken during this event of the cold over the first two weeks of February. Now this particular data set only goes back to 1945, but... It's the third coldest on record since 1945. Now, the global warming models would have it warmer and warmer and warmer. So I don't know how we keep in this trajectory of going cooler, more record snow, more record wind, more record cold, continentally, city-wise, regionally, yet it's still supposed to be CO2. I don't get it. It's going the opposite direction of what we were forecast to do. Now, my whole analysis is our jet streams are in the wrong place. This is brought about by the sun. And here's another significant indicator. Tornadoes in Guatemala. They're calling it a land spout. It sort of looks like a dust devil at some time, but it sure looks like it could be an EF1 ripping through there as well. Now down to Croatia, Adriatic's getting an amazing blast of weather this year. Lenticular clouds, stunning shot. Valavam, Delico. Thanks for taking the shot. The global corporate media never talks about our sun in a repeating 400-year pattern of low solar activity. And this, in turn, is going to have changes in our cloud cells and the jet streams both. They're going to be in the wrong places. We're going to start to see movements around. Moisture patterns are going to shift. Drought as well. Cold temperatures here. Heat pushed up in the wrong place over there. This brings us out to the 18th of February. Start to see how the jet streams are bending around in Europe. But bringing you back here to the U.S., same time frame next week. We're going to have two jets slamming and breaking into each other. Polar jet slams with a subtropical jet. Well, that circle is extreme weather. Repeating narrative that I keep seeing to try to explain away all this record cold is that the warmer Arctic's creating record cold because it's a warmer Arctic. Now, they try to show you these really cute little graphics here. Nice coloration, though, I must admit. The gray with the blue and the red, nice. Normal jet streams on the left. And bad polluting, CO2, human-inducing climate change people on the right. Warmer Arctic equals bad jet stream. But they never really talk about these natural undulations. You know, we go from El Nino to La Nina and back and forth several times through a generation while we're alive on the planet. These in turn cause changes in precipitation, 
wind velocity, and all these other things in between. And this is how people forecast out if you're on the futures market for ag products, just based on this. They know the changes are natural. Yet nobody wants to talk about natural variability in the sun on a 400-year cycle or just the significant changes that roll around every five to seven years. It's all got to be CO2 because you can't tax the sun. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you like this type of information, please visit our sponsor, My Patriot Supply, because your purchases help keep ADAPT 2030 on the air. MyPatriotSupply.com. Repair with ADAPT 2030. And if you do like this information and analysis, 30 minutes at a go, mini Ice Age Conversations podcast. And if your information feed is snippets of one minute or less, the ADAPT 2030 social media rundown.